This is racist. I told him in the email already. You say it's racist? Why is it racist? It's racist because I was born in China, because I come from China. What do you do if you're a sitting politician and you are alleged to be involved in a foreign election interference scheme? Well, first, you deny the allegations. And second, you turn around and shout racism because that's what everyone does when they have nothing to hide. Back in Ottawa, things continue to fall apart for the Trudeau Liberals. After weeks of pressure, the feds have finally caved and are starting the process of developing a foreign agent registry. But who could have guessed? The number one concern for the federal government is to make sure they're not seen as racist. That's how you know they're really concerned about foreign election interference. Drop a like in the video, help us out by subscribing to the True North YouTube channel, and the common question for the episode is this. What should the punishment be for elected officials, MPs or provincial parliamentarians who are found to be involved in a foreign election interference scheme? Let me know and let's get into it. Another Friday afternoon bombshell from Global News dropped last week, continuing to blow the China scandal or China Gate or whatever name we end up landing on for this scandal wide open. The latest news alleges that progressive conservative MPP, also from Don Valley North, what a coincidence, Vincent Ku, allegedly played the role of financial intermediary in the CCP back plot to interfere in the 2019 election. An election interference network directed by China's Toronto consulate allegedly involved a sitting member of the Ontario legislature, according to sources with knowledge of the investigation into Beijing's covert efforts during the 2019 federal election. Those sources assert that Vincent Ke, a progressive conservative member in Premier Doug Ford's government since 2018, served as a financial intermediary in Chinese Communist Party interference schemes described in two separate Privy Council Office intelligence reports reviewed by Global News. Ke has denied the allegations. One of the documents that refer to the funding schemes is a January 2022 Privy Council Office report which asserts that the CCP's Toronto area network included 11 or more 2019 federal candidates, 13 or more aides, and an Ontario MPP. Now we know who that Ontario MPP is. And when asked to explain the allegations on Friday, Vincent Ke took a page out of Justin Trudeau's playbook and he did what every man does when they have absolutely nothing to hide. He cried racism. False accusation. This is racist. I told him in the email already. You say it's racist? Why is it it's racist? It's racist because I was born in China, because I come from China. And Doug Ford, who governed in lockstep with Justin Trudeau for the past three years and who famously stood shoulder to shoulder with Trudeau as he invoked the Emergencies Act, is in a stunning and out of character move doing something different than Justin Trudeau. Within hours of the global news story alleging Vincent Ke's involvement in the CCP election interference schemes, Vincent Ke announced his resignation from PC caucus. In other words, Doug Ford booted him from caucus. Here was the premier's statement. While the allegations against Mr. Ke are not proven, they are serious and deserve his full and undivided attention as he works to clear his name. As a result, and out of an abundance of caution, Mr. Ke offered to step away from Ontario PC caucus to sit as an independent. Now, there were some pretty good comments from the statement. Won't be happy until we see some arrests and resignations from all involved. You know, I think that's where a lot of people are at right now. I think a lot of people are waiting for some real action here. Let's get an actual investigation, a criminal investigation. And how are we allowing these people, if they really were involved in this stuff, to sit in our legislatures? Weird how nothing like this is happening at the federal level. It is strange, isn't it? It is strange that uh, someone involved, someone alleged to be involved in this is just sitting in Liberal caucus, enjoying life as a Liberal MP. Funny, a provincial Tory was working to get the federal Liberals elected. Well, let's just say they're not really playing for the team we think they're playing for, are they? And as I mentioned at the top of the show, after weeks of pressure, the feds have finally caved and are starting the process of opening a foreign agent registry. Now, what's funny is if you go all the way back to when this scandal first started to unravel, a foreign agent registry was one of the reasons why the CCP allegedly backed the Liberals to win, because the Liberals were against a registry, and certain conservative MPs, like BC's Kenny Chu, was a loud advocate for a foreign agent registry. Now it appears that all of that tough work that the communists allegedly put in to get the Liberals elected 
It's all backfiring on them. And this is how you know the liberals are really taking this issue seriously. They've run the numbers as last week we discussed over 91% of Canadians take this issue seriously. So they knew that something had to be done. This is how you know they're really taking it seriously. Their number one concern with the foreign agent registry is to not be seen as racist. Now, if you don't believe me, take a look at this CBC article announcing the government's plans. Liberals to begin public consultations on setting up a foreign influence registry. The first line of the article, International Trade Minister Mary Ng wants to ensure registry does not stoke anti-Asian racism. The first line is not, International Trade Minister Mary Ng wants to ensure that China stops meddling in our elections. The first line is that she's worried it might stoke anti-Asian racism. Public Safety Minister Marco Menachino announced Friday that the Liberal government wants to hear from Canadians on creating a foreign influence transparency registry to help prevent other countries from meddling in Canada's affairs. The Liberals have been under intense scrutiny in recent weeks over allegations detailed in media reports citing unnamed security sources and highly classified documents that they did not act when warned that China was trying to interfere in the last two federal elections. International Trade Minister Mary Ng, who is Chinese-Canadian, here we go, said it is important to create the registry in such a way that does not stoke anti-Asian racism. We have a great responsibility to ensure that we are not unfairly or unintentionally creating a cloud that hovers over an entire community that is feeling incredibly uncertain and who have felt the discomfort of unconscious bias that became very conscious in the early days of the pandemic, said Ng. Unbelievable. Everyone who's serious about this issue knows it has nothing to do with racism. That's why some of the loudest advocates for a registry happen to be Chinese Canadians. It's about stopping our enemies from interfering in our democracy. It's about tracking spies who work for our enemies. Now, if this foreign agent registry goes ahead and you happen to find yourself on that list, it's probably because you're a spy working against our interests and not because of the color of your skin. And when asked on Saturday by CTV's Vashi Capellos about whether or not the Canadian government would remove any mention of China on the foreign registry to avoid being seen as racist, Mary Ng didn't rule that out. Watch this clip. Certainly the last thing any of us should be trying to do is further, uh, uh, you know, further, uh, you know, f further any kind of hate going towards the Chinese community uh, in this country. And I, and I appreciate you making those points. But the focus is not over the past three weeks on alleged interference from other countries. And where the registry is concerned, does that mean, for example, that your government is considering not specifically naming China in, the, uh, you know, uh, encompassing the, the types of foreign operatives who have to register. And, and I ask you that question because I spoke to the Prime Minister, the former Prime Minister of Australia, Malcolm Turnbull, who brought that law in 2018 to Australia. They did not specifically name China at the time. He said it was a colossal mistake and hasn't actually done anything as a result to root out Chinese foreign interference. I think the point to this uh, that we are pursuing in the registry is to make sure that there is greater transparency and that there is another tool to protect Canadians against foreign interference. That's what this is. We're really serious about stopping election interference, but just to be safe, we might avoid mentioning the name of the enemy because we wouldn't want to be seen as racist. The story doesn't stop there for Mary Ng, the international trade minister on Friday. Chuck Kwan, the chair of the Toronto Association for Democracy, testified in front of parliamentarians. Besides calling for the establishment of a foreign agent registry, another Asian Canadian calling for a foreign agent registry, so racist. Kwan said that a lot of foreign interference takes place through the use of organizations set up by those who are close and friendly to the CCP. Two of those organizations happen to be the National Congress of Chinese Canadians and the successor to that organization, the Confederation of Toronto Chinese Canadian Organizations. According to Blacklock's reporter, Marrying has attended several events hosted by the Confederation of Toronto Chinese Canadian Organizations. And when asked to comment by Blacklocks, Mary Ng's office refused. Reminder about the common question, what should the punishment be for elected officials who are found to be involved in a foreign election interference scheme? Let me know. All right, that's going to do it for us today on the show. I will catch you on Thursday. My name is Harrison Faulkner, and this is Ratio.